Hello, I'm Enzo, and how hard is it to beat Borderlands 2 with only unique gear? The rules of this run are, I can only use unique gear, my source being the Borderlands wiki, and there's unique gear available in all slots except for class mods, meaning I will not be using class mods in this run. I will be playing as Krieg because I've only ever played as him once before, but this run completely changed my opinion of him. An interesting thing about this run is I start with two uniques, the Contraband Skyrocket and the Vault Hunter's Relic. The third unique of this run is the normal starting pistol. I know it's weird, but it's because one of the parts is called Crappy Starter or something like that. Since I'm using the starter pistol, everything at the beginning is the same as usual. Until the game does this funny thing that I even called where Knuckle Dragger drops the Hornet with no farming required. You gotta be kidding me! Dude! What did I say? What if I got a Hornet? Imagine I get a Hornet I unique only run. Like, for sure. Flyersburg went as usual, but while doing some of the side quests, I started to notice the issue with only using the starter pistol. At least in the legendary only run, I had damage, but now I'm squishy and have no damage. I was trying to do all the side quests I could to get over leveled to hopefully have a better chance, but this wasn't going very well. So I decided to start using the Contraband Skyrocket. I only used it when I was really struggling because it's so broken, but it is technically a unique. Since I'm playing as Krieg, if I were smart, I would go for the skill that increased my health. But I wanted magazine size more, and bloodlust stacks didn't work until I restarted my game, unfortunately. If you can't tell so far, there have been many deaths and a ton of close calls in this run. I also hate marauders that decide to run away when they get downed. The boom boom fight was just me hiding the whole time because I was scared of getting one shot. I didn't want to rely on Buzzak's rampage for damage, but the healing is way too useful and this run would have taken way longer. It might even have been impossible without it. This was probably the worst the Captain Flint fight has gone for me because I have no shield, a starter pistol as my main damage, and I can only use basic grenades because the Skyrocket heals him. Long story short, after many deaths, I used my Buzzaxe Rampage to heal from his minions and hid while waiting for the cooldown. Captain Flint drops the Tinderbox, and it is finally nice to have another weapon. But my health situation is still the same. My only healing source is Buzzaxe Rampage and enemy health drops. But at least the fire damage from the tinderbox is very nice. I also had no clue until recently there's a chest up here, which is pretty neat. I meet two of the best characters in the game and then head off to Southpaw Steam and Power. I hope to get some uniques from the assassins when Watt decides to drop a unique and a legendary. I also got a sniper from Roof, but that was it. On my way to kill Doc Mercy, my old nemesis, the Fire Barrel, strikes back. Of course! Why wouldn't the barrel dot still be there? In Frostburn Canyon, there's a unique gun that has a guaranteed spawn in a pond called the Lasso. This gun absolutely slaps, especially for being a guaranteed spawn. Loot, homie! A volcano? Between the lasso, Buzzax Rampage, and Lilith stealing most of my kills, the rest of the bandits weren't too difficult. After meeting Ellie, I remembered I don't want to use vehicles for combat. And if you watch the Borderlands 1 version of this video, you can guess how this went. Luckily, the vehicles have a tendency to get stuck near the ramp by Ellie's, but that doesn't mean they are defenseless. They deal an unholy amount of damage, and yet again, my only healing is Buzzax Rampage. That's when I had one of my rare good ideas. Wait, 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 I have an idea. Dude, the box. The box with the gun in it. That's... Basically, there's a chance for a box to spawn with a unique gun here. And considering the fast travel is right next to it, 
farming it was a no brainer. After 3 reloads, I got the Gwen's head. It helped out a ton, especially later, but it was great for killing the vehicles as well. And while I was still killing vehicles, I almost got this one in Fight For My Life when it styled on me. It literally drifted into me, right as it downed me, that's not fair. Some deaths while trying to do side quests later, it was time to assault the Bloodshot Dam. I was planning to fight Bad Ma legitimately, but the Skyrocket did way more damage than I expected. The Bloodshot Dam itself was slow, and I used Skyrocket for Mad Mike, but in the Ramparts, I got my first, and thankfully only crash of the run. Which is kind of surprising considering I have Physex on high but I guess I didn't use that many elemental guns in this run. The Bloodshot Ramparts isn't that difficult, but running out of ammo near the end is always an issue for me here. However, some helpful robots fixed that problem for me by making me respawn. For the Warden, well, I have the Lasso, Krieg's mag size skill, and the Warden has a huge crit spot, so you can guess how it went. I never went to the Gulag, and I certainly don't want to find out anytime soon. Next up, I headed back to the Bloodshot Dam to do the Split Intergroup mission for a shotgun, but more importantly, out of body experience. I got the Rock Salt, and while in Moxies, I finally got the Bad Touch, and getting corrosive is great for the next part of the game. For out of body experience, I would normally get the gun, but if you can't tell, I kind of need the shield. This is the first unique shield that you can get in the story if you don't count the flame of the Firehawk. And some bandit shotguns, I think with Teteor barrels or something like that, do this weird thing when you aim up. For once, I have a fire weapon, but after using these machines, I can't go back to struggling to ignite three Varkids. Besides some difficult baddie mutated Varkids, Tundra Express was pretty easy. So easy, in fact, that I decided to level up a Goliath to a Godliath. The only annoyance here was the buzzards, as usual. But this is why the corrosive bad touch is so great here. I also found a one-armed bandit, which is cool, but the curse of the fire barrel strikes again. For some reason, this one just became invincible, cause it knew it would get me a revive, I guess. What? what was that? So Mordecai takes my kill, he slags the Goliath, and the barrel becomes invincible. Ah yes, a perfectly normal series of events in Borderlands 2. Besides that, the Wilhelm fight was a piece of cake. It was so easy in fact, I decided to get the Master of All He Surveys challenge, where you kill Wilhelm without killing his surveyors. Before the next part of the story, I went back to Tundra Express to do Mine All Mine and the train robbery mission so I can get the first actual grenade, the Fuster Cluck, meaning I will now stop abusing the Skyrocket. Anyways, Sanctuary goes into the sky and I go to do Think Slaughterhouse, and I recommend watching the VODs of this playthrough so you can see and hear the pure stress that this was but I got stuck on round 2 for a while, and after a ton of waiting for my action skill to recharge, I finally clutched up round 5 and got the hail. I would have liked another element, but I guess the next area has a ton of robots. It's like he was sliding! And for some reason, I thought I could kill the bridge exploder with the hail. That didn't work. Between being overleveled and the hail's 150% crit damage, the Thresher didn't stand a chance. Defending the beacon wasn't difficult either, but the Exploder Rush surprised me a little. Back in Sanctuary, I learned that you can reload the game to skip dialogue, which is very useful. I then got the Law and the Good Touch on my way out. Even though I know I can't use the loot, my brain still has to open every chest possible when I get my favorite grenade in a normal run. Oh, whatever could this be? Oh no, it's it's a boss. Whatever will I do? Oh no. I'm so scared. 
Oh, oh no. Don't. Don't do that. All right. Reaper. Aw, oh, man. I tried to farm the blockhead, the unique Minecraft shotgun that the batty creeper drops, but this farm is annoying and I only got the legendary sniper after a few tries. Next, I have two options for shields, farming a bunch of stalkers or doing a quest line. I didn't get the second stalker mission, so overlook it is. I don't use Nova shields normally, but it was amazing for the preserve. It was also insanely useful for clearing out weaker enemies in the creature slaughter. Speaking of which, it went very well. Until the batty fire thresher decided to make me redo round 5. It wouldn't be so bad if he just didn't health gate me with every single attack. In the end however, I prevailed and obtained the creamer which is great for getting second wins. Out of all of my dozens of runs of this game, I never knew this is where one of these was until I got just the right angle to see it. So that's really cool. Even though I can't really use any of the loot, it's still disappointing to not get a drop from the loot homies. Bloodwing wasn't really a threat. I just needed to get through her fire phase so I could use the heartbreaker because we all know how well-balanced Hyperion shotguns are. Another accidental discovery is this challenge. I've always wondered how to get it. I just guess I've never been here at night before. From the good, the bad, and the Mordecai, I got Moxie's endowment. After that, I was working on the clan war missions when some weird stuff happened. It started with one car getting stuck, then textures glitching out, And during another mission, the Moonshiner getting stuck and his audio glitching out like crazy. For the Clan Wars, I sided with the Zaffords so I could get the Chulain. It's a joke gun that deals slag and shock damage, but also slags you, basically meaning I get two shot. I didn't need to do positive self image, but I was there anyways. I also got the ruby from Moxie. Back to the preserve, the fire barrel by the power switch did the funny invincible thing again, and I get to show off the pure joke that the chew lane is. I also got, quite literally, a loot drop. After getting the Trespasser, which like Mordecai's skill in Borderlands 1, ignores shields, I head off to Thousand Cuts. I got some sick sniper shots with the Trespasser, and since the enemies there are so easy as well, I cooked up another God Lieth with some help from the Chulain. The Mortar section was going well, until I decided to sell some stuff. Take note of the fire barrel, and me holding the chew lane. Hence the curse of the fire barrels. That was a combination, a very unfortunate combination of being slagged, and of course my old nemesis, the barrel. Let's just say I was a little over leveled for opportunity, so using Buzzax Rampage to kill Jack's body double is fine. I also did the side quests there and got a new grenade, 10 levels above my old one. I then suffered through Lynchwood, not for the Sheriff, but so I can suffer even more in the form of the Bane. Corrosive will come in handy soon enough though. I suffered through the noise that the Bane makes a little bit before turning it off for the Batty Constructor. I found another loot homie, but sadly no loot. For the auto cannons and bunker, I lowered the volume so that there was still sound, but so that the bane wasn't that annoying. Angel core was pretty much the same, but I tried to use the bane a bit less. And after completing angel core, you can get the Scorpio assault rifle. 
The fastest way to complete BFFs is by talking to O'Cantler last. And from that, I got my next shield upgrade. Krieg also has some of the best lines in the game. Insurance fraud! Nobody likes the Iridium Blight. And besides the story, I'm only here for the Fibber from the Real Boy missions. I also did the Hyperion Slaughter since I was right there, and it was actually going well until round 4, when snipers, surveyors, RPG loaders, and super baddie loaders spawn. I somehow managed to beat round 4, but I knew from the start I couldn't beat round 5, so I'll come back later. Next up is Sawtooth Cauldron, where I picked up the treasure hunt mission. The ambush commanders weren't a huge issue thanks to Krieg's blood explosion skill, but the main issue with this level is the buzzards. My only useful gun against the buzzards is a Scorpio, so it just takes a while to kill a single one. I learned that the kiss of death can stick to enemy crit spots, so mortar just got melted. What does the kiss of death do? Yeah, I w I'm not questioning it. If you can't tell by the two deaths up here, the buzzards are still a major issue. My only option here is to stay in cover and peek out every so often, rinse and repeat until I kill all five. I also did the Chosen One mission while I was there, and I got the Evil Smasher from it. And I headed back to the Costa Caverns to get the Dominator. In the Arid Nexus, I love doing the Monster Mash mission because it can give a ton of XP. The Scrack were a menace, as usual, but with some pretty lucky Buzz Axe hits, this might be the first time I didn't die to them. I then went to get the Bone Shredder and the Lady Fist from Una Baja. My damage isn't too great right now, so Saturn was a huge issue. And as such, my only option was to hide in the Coward Building. Blood Explosion Chain killed the loaders, but since constructors have a stupid amount of explosive resistance, the Lady Fist's critical damage is what shines here. I also love getting one shot trying to go into a building. After reloading the zone, I got the last gun part for Hungry Like the Skag and got a new assault rifle. I was a bit overleveled for the Hero Pass's door, but in Hero's Pass itself, the enemies were my level, making it a little bit difficult. The Dominator carried me against normal robots, but the Lady Fist carried me against the Baddie Constructor. For Jack and the Warrior, the fight wasn't that difficult, just slow and tedious. Running out of ammo is still an issue. The reason I'm skimming over the last boss fight is the fact that there are still more uniques I want to get from some of the DLCs. Starting with a DLC that I would normally never do, but I need a certain piece of gear from it. I also killed a two-legged drifter, which is a neat rare enemy. The main reason I don't like Hammerlock's DLC is the Witch Doctors. The vampires are the worst ones. But I found out you can stagger them with Krieg's Buzz Axe Bombardier skill. For the gear I'm looking for, you need to do some of the main quests, and it's my least favorite type of farm where I have to kill a bunch of enemies before I can kill the drop source. After three annoying farms, I got the Rough Rider, which is really good on Krieg, especially with his Embrace the Pain skill. In Captain Scarlet's DLC, there are a ton of uniques, and no beard can drop one. Emphasis on can. I get it on every other run, but not when I can actually use it, but not when I actually want to use it. Sand skiffs are vehicles too, so the same gun rules apply. I also forgot to mention when I got the Manly Man shield, so here's why I remembered to add it. Sandman and the Big Sleep can drop a unique and fun rocket launcher, but I didn't get it and I decided it wasn't worth it to farm. The recording's audio also bugged out here, which is really weird, and I wonder why it was only this part, but it was kind of neat. I 
also did the treasure hunt here as well and another treasure hunt but this is finally another source of healing there's just something about washburn refinery that makes it one of my favorite maps but in the interest of time there's nothing of note there yet after blowing up herbert i completed don't copy that floppy so i can acquire the pampernail i only recently learned how cool and broken this gun is and this is my first time actually using it and same deal with the sandhawk you can get from captain scarlet next up is a special operation i need to kill a bunch of enemies without damaging a certain one this is extremely difficult with Krieg's blood explosion, but the little sis kind of just wandered away from the rest of the enemies. And if you kill Mr. Bubbles without damaging the little sis, she gives you the little Eevee, which reduces your action skill cooldown when you kill an enemy with it. After getting to the top, I remembered to get the treasure hunt mission, so I had to go down and all the way back up. This grenade sucks, but it is an upgrade. During the Roscoe fight, I noticed something. It's it literally uses the Borderlands One, Rack or Rack Hive, soundtrack as well. That's really funny. The Leviathan was just slow and annoying to fight, and I couldn't even use anything from the loot room. The last DLC I want to do, of course, is Tiny Tina's DLC. The Midnight Star might deal more damage than the Kiss of Death, but it is way harder to use considering the grenades come back at you. Skeletons just may be the most annoying enemies in this game. But then, of course, you have the immortal swordsmen that you literally gotta get the sword out of their back to kill them. That's... those are the most annoying in the game for sure. Dude, I just had to say something, didn't I? For Moxie's bar, I punched the patron, but he kinda lived and ran away. Yeah, this is just Boron's 2 doing its thing. I don't think he's supposed to live, but uh, all right. The Pimpernel is great against the trees. I mean, fire versus wood and all. For critical fail, the second time you pick up the weapon, it downs you. So make sure you have a second wind nearby. I didn't use the crit that much, mostly because you have a 5% chance to drop it when you reload. But now for the most difficult enemies of the entire run. Dragons. Well, red ones specifically. The Pimpernel is my only effective weapon against them, but it deals fire damage, and red dragons resist fire. Long story short, I use Captain Blade's assault rifle, which is meant for melee damage, so it was a slow and dangerous process, as I have no natural healing or shielding. But any other type of dragon is super easy to kill. The Ghost Kings went as usual, pure pain and suffering. I was vibing to the Minds of Avarice's theme, and while I was there, I got the Grog Nozzle, and I've never really used it, and apparently an interesting thing that happens when Krieg's Buzz Axe is thrown, it can be multiplied under the Grog Nozzle's Drunk Effect, so that's what it does. That's pretty cool. I also did the Jumping Puzzle without too much help. And this area has to be some of my favorite mobbing in the whole game. There's so many enemies in one relatively small spot. After so many years of skipping this puzzle, I learned that the solution is to activate the buttons in reverse order that the cube activated, which is awesome. You guys are as smart as now for the main reason I went Krieg this run, the broomstick blood explosion chain. Just check this out. That is just awesome. Anyways, if you think I'm having too much fun, well, the fun times have passed. You know how I was talking about red dragons earlier? Well, now imagine that, but a boss. And you have the handsome dragon. Since I'm using the Rough Rider, any fire dot basically kills me. And my other shield, the manly man? Well, if you don't know what it does, it increases the damage you take from dots. So yeah, what are my other options here? Well. 
basically just stay behind cover and kill him with the assault rifle. Later, the skeleton in Spider Blood Explosion did make up for some of that previous pain. And this is also the first time I did this puzzle without dying. I got the lightning bolt from the sorcerers, but they didn't drop the magic missile that I wanted. The sorcerer's daughter was pretty easy to kill with the fire pimpernel. The only annoying thing she does is when she heals most of her health. But besides that, I had no trouble with her. This is the clip I needed to review in editing. I did get a legendary firestorm, but for some reason it just disappeared. I feel like I picked it up, but I guess not. I mean, I got a Bravio Fireball too, but I really thought I got the Legendary. That was so weird. Right before I beat the final boss of this DLC, I should mention, I got the Source Explosion, the Orc from the Magic Slaughter, and I beat the Hyperion Slaughter off stream after I beat the boss. But now, for the true final boss, the Handsome Sorcerer. His first two phases are really easy, but his third phase has fire resistance and does the funniest thing ever, spawns red dragons. And we all know how that has gone so far. Needless to say, that was probably the worst time I've ever had with the dragons in this DLC. But overall, this run went amazing for my second time playing Krieg, and I have a new appreciation for his playstyle. In total, I got 52 plus 3, and maybe any others I forgot to add, so let's say 55 total uniques. There are way more in this game, but getting all of them is both way too time consuming and impossible in one playthrough thanks to the clan wars. That's enough for me though. Thank you all for watching. These videos wouldn't be possible without all of your support, my channel members especially, and I always appreciate you watching. This is going to be Enzo from Look Into Gaming signing out.